right, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to Late in the Day Favorite Beverage and Question and Answers on this Easy Go Golf Cart Restoration or Redo. And let's recap for a minute. And so in the past videos that you saw, you saw where I used the Herculiner. I did the floorboards, I changed the plugs, the fuel lines, the fuel filter. And we're going to change your oil in an upcoming video. Since then I've been sanding and doing a lot of the body work on it. I'll pan around and show you in a minute. I did paint it. It's that metallic emerald green from Duplicolor. So let me show you a couple of the ads real quick and I'll come back and we'll get on with the project. Okay, so that was Duplicolor and I ordered it straight from them because Amazon didn't have it at the time in the metallic that I wanted or that the people wanted. So. Anyway, that's the color that I used. What I did is I sanded it with 150 in the bad areas, but I went over the whole thing with 220, 320, and then finally 400. But what I did on uh, 320 is after I sanded it with 320, I put a coat of primer on it. Primer, it's a sealer. I'll show you a picture. Okay, so that was the primer sealer. I put one coat on. I sanded it again lightly with the 320 again over the top of it because it had a bunch of little nibs and stuff and I put a second coat of primer on. We're not talking about a lot of surface area so kind of easy to do primer filler and then I sanded it with 400. Then I washed it off real good, went over it with a tack cloth, I put it in the garage and I painted it, uh, the emerald green, the metallic. So. I'll pan around, I'll show you some still pictures, and I'll show you a picture of it here in the garage. So, On the upholstery side, I went down and I bought the foam and I bought the vinyl fabric. I set it out in the sun for a little bit, like I told you on the past video. I stretched it, stapled it. I was into it for like about 60 bucks because I used, uh, or I bought remnant material to do it with. So it was $60 there. The rest of the stuff so far, I'm probably up to about $160, $175, but I'm going to show you some. but I'm going to show you something from out at the club. A couple of things that they gave me, a couple of things that I bought. But what I have in front of me is even though I did that whole floor pan with Herculiner, uh, you know, my wife was saying she'd like to have like some kind of a rubber mat on there. So for about $20 out at Lowe's, I got this right here. It's just like rubble, uh, rubber flooring. And I'm going to mark it, cut it, and I'm just going to lay it in there. But I'll be back in a So I'll be back in a second. I'm going to show you some things that they gave me out at the club that I belong to where we discussed things that people had extras of and whatever. And I got a really good idea for the golf cart. See you in just a sec. I'll tell you all about Easy. it, right? Okay, so out at the club, we're sitting around talking. They said, hey, does it have a stereo? I said, no. So you go put one in it. I said, well, I wasn't really thinking about it. And they said, well, if you're going to, we have, like I said, everybody's got extra stuff laying around at home. So one of the guys gave me this antenna right here. Sorry, it took me a few minutes. It's made by a company called Metra, M-E-T-R-A. And I asked him, well, where did, I mean, it didn't matter. I was getting it for free. I said, well, where did you get it? He goes, I got it out at Walmart. It was like $9. And I, he goes, but I'm not going to use it. He goes, I want another route. He goes, but do you want it? And I said, yeah, sure. So I figured, okay, I got the antenna for the golf cart, right? So I went ahead and I needed a piece of plastic because the little bezel area on the dashboard on the golf cart, the hole's too big. So online, I went ahead from Amazon, I bought a quarter inch piece of black. It's like kind of corrugated on one side, real smooth on the other, black plastic. So I got... So I got that and I turned around and I cut out this new bezel right here. So that way, this will go into the dash, and then the stereo will slide right into it here, and it'll lock into place. So, and I already measured it and all that and cut it. I used just a jigsaw with a super fine metal blade, and I just 
cut it in a little straight edge, uh, which is a big, you know, like framing square, or whatever you got laying around. I just marked it off, cut it, and it came out nice and flat. Just hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. It looks perfectly fine. So, got that ready to go in. Then I thought, okay, well, I still don't have speakers. Now, currently, or as of like a week ago when I ordered these, I bought a set of Polk speakers. They're right here, and I'll leave you the link below. Um, they're on sale. I think I paid $25, $27, something like that, for these. They're six and a half inch. So I'll leave you the link below. I'll show you a close up here in a few minutes. They're black. They look pretty cool, and they come actually with it's like a template, plastic kind of template. Let me see. Not a template really, it's a mounting bracket, like if you cut the hole you can put this on there and the speakers will line up over the top of this and go in. Got some instructions and stuff, I have the speaker inside, I will show you a close up or a still photo uh, in just a couple of minutes on it. Now one thing I'm going to say about these when I got them, I was a little disappointed in the fact I had to go down and buy some speaker wire because in these speaker kits all that they gave me was this much I don't even know it's like I don't know what is that a foot I, I don't know anyway it's way too short to do anybody any good the wire is cheap I don't know why they didn't put more wire in there but I went down I got some butt connectors I got some more I attached it so these I've got plenty of length now and I'll cut it down to size when I put the speakers in place them. But anyway, one little hiccup I, I suppose that wasn't a big deal to overcome. Okay, so the next thing, again, it was on sale on uh, Amazon Warehouse Deals, I believe. So, and I'll leave you the product link below and this was like, um, again, I think it was like $25, $27. It's just a Kenwood digital media receiver. It doesn't have a CD player. I didn't want it with anything like that. All I cared is it had AM, FM. And here's the box. And I'm gonna show you a close up right now, a still picture, but those are the ones anyway. I got these two off Amazon, so, you know, I figured, You know, I figured, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a stereo in it. That way they can enjoy it when they're out there, you know, feeding the animals and stuff. At least they'll have music to listen to. Okay, okay. so let's do the question and answer part of this now. Now, one of the first questions I was asked out at the club is, hey, when you were doing this and you were doing the fuel lines, what kind of uh, clamps did you use? Did you use those worm drive ones like out at Harbor Freight that I had done a video on in the past in the kit? And I said, no that kit is only like an emergency backup set of hose clamps the reason why is those things will snap on you easy and they strip out real easy uh, real easy so for things that are real light duty or if i'm in a pinch and i don't have anything else laying around i'll use those otherwise i got some from the auto parts store that are a much better quality made worm drive clamp and I have a small assortment of those. So that's what I use. Now the thing about these worm drive clamps is they can cut into that rubber material. The best clamps, like you'll see on race cars and like high performance kind of rebuilds and stuff, those are T-bar clamps. Um, they're probably the best because they give you a 360 degree tightening surface as you tighten them. It tightens in 360 degrees, whereas these worm drives, they don't really do that. They kind of clamp down and pinch real hard. And again, they can cut into the hoses easy. Let me show you a picture of the T-bar. Okay, so, but they're more costly, like I said. So, no, I didn't use those. I used, you know, what I had. Like I said, it's a kind of a charitable project in a way, but I am putting some money into it, but I'm using the things that I have at my disposal also. Uh, one other comment, I definitely would not use these, and I'll tell you from experience on anything, I mean, in talking about the Harbor Freight warm drive, uh, you know, hose clamps, 
I would not use them on anything automotive. That's my opinion. I wouldn't do it. Stay away from it. You're going to run into trouble, I believe, with them. And never use them on like anything that's high pressure. I used them one day as a backup. I didn't have one on a compressor hose that had blown. And it's just, uh, they're just not any good. They're not even worth messing with. So go down and get you some good clamps. I mean, and they'll hold up fine. Um, I went over in the video, I mean, how I sanded this and painted it, and I'm going to show you uh, another picture besides the stills here in a sec, but I'll also show you the still pictures. This thing came out really sharp looking, I think. Now, the other thing is besides, you know, when I bought it and you buy it in metallic, it comes with a small can of hardener, and the ratio is about 50-50, and so it's kind of easy to mix, and you stir it up real good. Uh, I put on two coats. I put on a light coat overlapping 50%. I waited about 30 minutes. I put the second coat on, boom, I'm done. Now, you can go and buy a clear coat and put two, three, four, whatever coats you want on there. But I noticed with this metallic, you really don't have to. It has a really, really nice shine to it. So I'm not going to put the clear coat on it to answer your question. I'm going to leave it how it is. Okay, what kind of a spray gun did I use to spray this? I used an HVLP and I got it from Harbor Freight. Let me show you a picture. That, somebody said, oh, you know, they're junk, they're this, they're that. No, they're not, and I'll tell you why. I painted my, the exterior of my house with this HVLP, the one that you saw in the picture. I wasn't in a rush, and they wanted, uh, aside from the walls and everything around my house, including the house, the masking, and I understand it's a lot of work. They wanted thousands of dollars to do it. I spent well under a thousand dollars and I use this HVLP and I just took my time. I'm not in a rush, especially when there's that kind of a cost savings. And I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead. I know that the tip size probably isn't correct for automotive type painting, but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. It turned out to be perfectly fine and I just, it's great. You do the first coat, like I said, light. I waited 30 minutes. I went over it again, overlapping 50%. It turned out fine. It turned out great. So I don't have anything bad to say. I think that Harbor Freight HVLP has saved me one hell of a lot of money. You just got to make sure you clean it well and you take care of it. You know, a lot of the problems people run into is they don't take care of it. How much PSI did I use? I used 28 PSI, but that's on my compressor. I've got a 60 gallon compressor. It goes through its own canister filter. And I have two inline disposable filters and I'll leave you a link below on the disposable ones. And, and uh, I think I had mine's an Astro canister filter. I mean, so it's kind of a setup strictly for painting anyway when I did my wood projects, but I also use it for this. Now, you could probably easily get away with just the inline disposable filters and a different size compressor. But again, to answer your question, I used 28 PSI, and how did I come to know to use that? I took a piece of cardboard off an Amazon shipping box, I put paint thinner in it because it was about the same consistency as the paint was going to be, and I sprayed it and I just set my pattern until I liked how it looked, and I wasn't getting a ton of overspray. And what about the pressure? It has a pressure gauge on the bottom, I got that from out at Harbor Freight too, it works totally fine. And I use the, for setting the pressure, I use that right there. It's got a knob on the side and I set it for 28. Okay. What was the toughest part about all this? The sanding, then the masking off of everything. Naturally, that was kind of a little bit of a pain. And the cleanup. I just used lacquer thinner and I cleaned it all up real good, wiped everything down, shot a little more lacquer, you know, thinner through it and I put it away. Um, the stereo speaker wiring. I do have a question I'm going to ask anybody that's following this project with me that maybe that they can answer. This is a 1999 golf cart, not that it matters, and it had a harness in there. And I took a picture of it and I took a picture of the backside of uh, the stereo where all the wires are coming out. And then I took a picture of the of the one that's coming out of the golf cart and I want to make sure that I get all of these wires hooked up correctly. Now I think that I have them correct and I'll show you here in just a sec and then maybe somebody can comment and just make sure that you know I've got them lined up correctly.
And then, uh, the, so what's the next part of this? Well, we need to put uh, like bushings on the shackles and the leaf springs in the back. They're just totally gone. They're not even there. And uh, I'm going to change the oil, check you know the oil in the uh, the transfer case. And that's about it. And I'm sitting there trying to think. I mean, what else I'm going to do to it? It's a used golf cart that was, uh, like I said, not working. It's working now. It is drivable, but I'm trying to make it look really good before I take it back out. You know, for you know the kids and everybody out there that use it to feed the animals. I'm hoping you know they'll be jazzed over, you know, all the stuff I've done to it. And uh, like I said, charitable thing. So I thank everybody out at the club that watches the video for giving me the antenna. And Chuck from out at the club, thanks for telling me about Warehouse Deals having the stereo on sale that inexpensively. Um, it's not a high-end one, but it'll do for you know music and stuff. And the speakers. Uh, Save some money along the way here, but I do appreciate it. All right, I'm the Home Handyman. I hope you click subscribe. I hope you keep following me. And, uh, you know, what the heck, let's finish this thing and make it look good. I'll see you on the next video, folks. Bye-bye.